Okay, so to start off with, uh, one of the primary uh, things that you're going to want to start looking at uh, or get a hold of is a, a map of your operation. Um, perhaps some sources uh, to get a, a map of your operation might be the Natural Resources Conservation Service. Um, the, the Farm Service Agency may have some maps. Uh, there, uh, there may be some web uh, locations out there that you, perhaps Google Earth might be a source. Um, and we're going to talk about the Web Soil Survey here in a little bit too as a source for, to start with. Um, but once you get a map, so the first thing you want to do is identify your land uses. Um, you want to distinguish between rangeland and pasture land. Uh, and notably the difference uh, that you're going to look at is uh, pasture land would be land that you're fertilizing on an annual basis, um, hoping to probably get uh, a higher production on those. Um, different management would occur on pasture, that, pasture land than on range land. Perhaps your uh, soil testing um, on those lands as well. Range land uh, is managed primarily just by uh, the use of grazing management practices. Once you've got your uh, lands identified, you're gonna wanna break them and uh, draw out your fence lines so you know where the fence lines are and come up with a calculation of your acres um, within each paddock or pasture um, so that you know the, the, the number of acres that you have to work with there. Once you get your fences in there, you're gonna to wanna to identify your, your uh, water sources. Um, are they dams, dugouts, uh, wells, uh, um, pipelines, where the pipelines run to, where are your stock tanks, um, along with that, not only is water quantity uh, important to know, but so is water quality. So perhaps some of those dams are uh, of poor water quality, or perhaps uh, they're inadequate, maybe they're dangerous. Um, um, but you need to identify uh, the quality of that water source. <clears throat> Additionally, you're going to want to identify uh, any weed problems, um, Canada thistle a problem, perhaps leafy spurge. Um, we talked about some of the invasive forage species such as uh, smooth brome, perhaps Kentucky bluegrass, um, maybe even uh, a crested wheatgrass. Um, anything that uh, may have the potential to uh, compete with uh, a, a native plant community that may you may want to serve, uh, serve your needs in a different capacity. So all these things you can be put, putting on your map, all right? Then you want to start identifying resource concerns, um, grazing distribution issues. Um, typically you'll find distribution problems. Uh, you'll have a, uh, your water source perhaps in a corner of your pasture on the far opposite corner uh, the livestock may not get to that point because of the distance from water to those points. They'll really concentrate on those areas surrounding your dams, dugouts, tanks. Um, so perhaps uh, uh, distribution is going to be a problem. Um, erosion areas. Um, a lot of times uh, pickup trails up and down uh, steep topography can create gullies. Um, those can all be nuisance and, and problem areas. If you have riparian areas in your um, paddocks, um, what are their quality? Is there any concern there, such as eroding banks? If they're eroding, ask yourself, why are they eroding? Is it uh, uh, livestock induced or perhaps um, it's uh, an impact from, uh, say, ice outs? I've seen. Uh, the White River, um, sometimes when the ice goes out on the White River down there, it can do some very massive um, soil erosion problems on the bank. So be thinking about the, those types of items as you do your resource inventories. Um, <clears throat> also be thinking about uh, your current management uh, concerns, plant composition. Um, what are the plant communities that, that uh, um, are out there on the range? Um, do you have diversified plant communities or, 
or are you you're kind of dependent on a single species for the entire um, grazing period, annual grazing period? So now that you've identified those things, you want to start thinking about your forage inventory. <clears throat> For those of you who have had a, uh, an inventory done, do you have soils maps for, for your operation? Okay, I'm getting one shake of the head, yes. Do you understand those soils maps and what they mean to you? Have you thought about what those soils are or read anything about them? You know, ours are, are pretty much dense, heavy clays, and I, I don't particularly understand. There's different classification, you know, bitmen, and, you know, I, I don't understand that in, in the breakdown as yeah. far as, and, and I can go in our reference and see what plant community should be there. Okay. But to some extent, once I get out on the ground, it all looks like gumbo to me. You know, <laughs> gumbo and hard pan. And so I haven't quite figured out how important on our place, really understanding all of those different soil types are. And then when we compare it to someone else's place, sometimes on the soil survey, they'll have a different uh, index for the same soils. Mm. Productivity index, mm -hmm. and so it even confuses me more. Okay, <laughs> all right. Um, you might visit with your local NRCS people, um, and maybe they can get a... a, a yeah, they keep retiring on me every time. They I keep retiring on Cheryl Nielsen gave up, and Tom Quinn gave up. Okay. <laughs> I'm going through them pretty fast. Oh, you're, you're hard on them, yeah. aren't you? Okay. All right. But those, <clears throat> those are good comments because uh, your soils are actually, will help you determine the productivity potential of um, each of your paddocks. And those proportional, or those relationships between the soil types and those uh, corresponding ecological sites um, that go with those soils, each of them will have a unique uh, plant community that can be associated with them. So, so it's important that you at least get familiar with them um, and understand what they mean. And, and I think you're doing that just by reading. What reading is that those difference things? between the soil type and the ecological type site? Okay, each, each one will have uh, each soil will have an identified ecological site identified to the, the soil, to the soil. So a particular soil may have a name, but then it will have a corresponding ecological site, such as loamy or perhaps thin upland. And it's that definition, such as thin upland, that um, in your particular area uh, will def be defined by a, a characteristic plant community, okay? And within that plant community, there will be a range of the species that would occur within that plant community. And, and so your resource inventory will hopefully help you determine, are you, are, is that plant community healthy? Is it somewhat near what it should be? Or is it, has it uh, gone far away, probably from prior management, and what I mean by prior management might be the past hundred years, okay? But those ecological sites are very important to you because that, that is what, what will help you determine um, your plant productivity and your plant communities. So. When you're doing your inventory and you're looking at that, pay close attention to uh, a number of things. One, what is the proportion or relationship to the, the, the warm, warm season species that occur um, and compared to the cool season grasses that occur out there? Um, where's Joe? He not here. Where's Joe? Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Um, he was telling us in our group out there that he found some of the warm season species on his place to not really be palatable um, during his season of use on one of his pastures. Well, when we, we talked about it, we found out that the, he had, the big blue stem was not being utilized by his livestock in the winter time. Well, that's not all that atypical necessarily for winter time use. And, and perhaps 
by doing this resource inventory that maybe um, he may have to find ways to better utilize that warm season grass by adjusting his season of use on it. So th that would be uh, uh, one of the values of completing a, a resource inventory. Um, let's see, there are two methods for coming up with uh, production on, on, uh, on your pastures. One of the, the first one I guess that I'd like to share with you would be, would come off your, the web soil survey. And in your um, handout there, there's a website that uh, should be in blue and it talks about the web soil survey. If you go to that location on, um, on the internet, you can physically look at your area. You just, all you gotta do is put in your township range and section and then you can outline a particular field. You physically draw in the, the outline and it will give you the soils that occur within that pasture. And then you can also, after the soils have been determined, you can also um, get your ecological sites and, and it, I think it gives you production too on those tables as well. So it's a valuable, valuable resource. So off of those, off of that then you can come up with uh, pounds of production in a, a pasture, okay? That's one way of doing it. Um, <clears throat> the second way, which um, having been to the field now, you've all been exposed to clipping. That is the second way. It's a little more labor intensive, but it is also more, it will give you the, the information right there. You're collecting the data yourself. So you just got to bear in mind that from one year to the next, of course, production can go up or down based on environmental conditions as well as previous management. So. Any questions on that? Okay. In our example, in your book there, we have three pastures. Um, and some of the work here has been done for you just so that, uh, so that you can follow along. But uh, in pasture one, which is the uh, western pasture, uh, appears to be along the river, it's 800 acres. And the, the information that you're given is that uh, it is a western wheatgrass, green needlegrass dominated community producing about 2,000 pounds per acre. Pasture two, the middle one, is a western wheatgrass blue grama paddock that uh, is producing about 900 pounds per acre. The east pasture, uh, which is quite a bit smaller, 325 acres, is a green needlegrass bluegrass pasture producing uh, about 1,500 pounds per acre. So we'll refer back to those numbers um, here in a little bit. So <clears throat> talking about an, an animal inventory now. So now that we've, we've estimated a production and we know about what we're producing in pounds per acre, um, we want to take a look at our, our livestock. Um, we have a young group here, the group that was here earlier this week, I asked them a question. I asked uh, some of the older uh, members, uh, what did a cow weigh in 1970? What did your cows weigh in 1970? Um, John, do you have? Uh, um, 1970, they were weighing about, they were and earlier. Heavier, they were a little heavier framed cattle back then, because we were probably running on some semethylamine and I think they probably weighed about 1,400 pounds, 1,500 pounds. In 1970? I would say. Really? Yeah, uh, the big semis would have. What's that? The big semis would have weighed that. Okay, how about the Angus? The black Angus from oh. 1970. Or well, Hereford? The Herefords were pretty big frame cattle. Then we, we've come to a, now it seems like we have a smaller frame critter than what we used to have. Am I wrong? Well, uh, that's what my Angus is big. Angus and stuff used to be a lot smaller. Because when you seen the pictures of them showing a yearling, it was like way higher. Yeah, but then it went through uh, a long time and where the they had some they got really, really good, good frame, really big frame yeah. Angus, and now we've kind of cut back. Okay. Well, with the price of corn being higher, I think everybody is getting to be, have a more efficient cow out there or trying to get a more efficient cow. It doesn't take so much range grass. The, uh, the animal unit back in the early days when they were developing this, I think was based on the thousand pound animal which kind of relates back to some of those smaller English breeds 
Um, and they've come a long way in the last 30, 40, 50 years. But, and not what they were exactly in 1970, I don't know. Maybe I should have put it back to 1950 or something. But anyway, um, the, uh, an animal unit is based on a 1,000-pound animal with a calf, all right? So what we want to do when we're completing our animal inventory is compare uh, what w you have on your operation to a 1,000-pound cow with a calf. Um, and the way you would do that is uh, in your table there, you would identify the size of your livestock at the bottom of the page there. And if you have a 1,200 pound cow now, um, you would use that uh, 1.15 animal unit equivalent to come up with, uh, um, to come up with uh, the corresponding animal unit. All right, so if you had 100, 1,200 um, uh, pound cow, you take that times 1.15, so that would be equal to 115 animal units. All right, everyone with me on that? Okay, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. For our, for our example here, we've already calculated uh, our cows, our bulls, and our, our horses. So we're dealing with, on our operation here, 136 animal units. So now we want to look and compare what we have for livestock and, and is, what is the need, what is our scale telling us, um, do we have enough forage to feed the livestock that we currently have. And so to do that, um, we want to look at, um, one, our harvest efficiency, which Stan talked to, you, talked to you about earlier. When we're looking at harvest efficiency for rangeland, we're primarily looking at 25% of our total production. All right, so, so to come up with, uh, <clears throat> to determine the amount of forage that is consumed by livestock, we take our forage consumed equals pounds per acre times the harvest, harvest efficiency. So, and then convert to animal unit months. So 2,000 pounds, which is what pasture one is producing, 2,000 pounds per acre, you multiply that times a harvest efficiency of 25%, gives us 500 pounds of forage consumed, okay? To convert that to AUMs then, we need to divide the 500 pounds by the 912 pounds, which is what an animal unit will consume in one month. So that'll give us our, our corresponding AUMs. So 500 pounds divided by 912 pounds equals a 0.55 animal unit months. So that's what we're producing per acre. So if we have 2,000 acres in pasture number one there, we multiply 2,000 acres times 0.5, or 800 acres, I'm sorry, times 0.55, and we come up with 440 AUMs for that particular pasture. Okay, is everyone with me on that? Yes? So, We've already calculated it for you for pasture two, we have 133 AUMs, and pasture three, we have 133 AUMs for a total of 706 AUMs combined in the three paddocks there. So then, it's just simple arithmetic then to determine whether we have enough forage to feed our animals. We said that we had 136 animal units. Our objective is to feed them for five months on the range. So 136 times five, five months, we come up with 608, uh, 680 AUMs. We're producing 706 AUMs of forage. So the amount of forage is greater than our animal demand, right? because 706 is greater than 680. So do we have a balance between 
livestock need and available forage? Yeah, we do. In fact, we have, what, 26 uh, AUM surplus? Okay. So is that good enough? What are you going to do those other uh, seven months? I don't know. That's, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I can't answer. 26, is 26 enough? I, I don't know. The, the inventory, the example here, we haven't talked about um, hay production and, and overall things that you would most definitely want to look at. Um, the AUMs produced from your hay fields um, and other um, forage production. Um, the other thing this doesn't look at uh, is drought. You know, do we want, how much do we want uh, in reserve for drought purposes? Right now we got uh, a maximum of 26 AUMs. That may or may not be enough. But that's the value of these resource inventories because that opens up a number of questions that you need to ask yourself um, um, so that you can set the right objectives um, and then set goals to achieve those objectives. Well, that's is just summertime grazing. Time this is summertime grazing. Yeah, the other ones are taken off there. They're not grazing. We're not even accounting for winter grazing here. Right, this is just winter. Grazing. Our goal here was for five months of grazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. That's true too. And in some places, those wintering deer herds can um, use a lot of stored forage or. Um, yeah. yep. So, like I say, the, the value of, of a resource inventory is to help identify problems and also identify opportunities. So. Um, it's very critical once you've set uh, an objective for your ranch um, to complete a resource inventory and, and help it uh, kind of be the baseline um, for, for what you do from that point forward.